video and smash that like button and hit that subscribe button and I'm in the ATV if you can see and I'm going to show you what this puppy going to do. Let's go baby! Okay, it's your boy Adrian. I'm in the same farm in the second video and smash that like button and hit that subscribe button and I'm in the ATV if you can see and I'm going to show you what this puppy going to do. Let's go baby! Okay, boys and girls, I'm going to be riding this. My brother flipped over and I was with him and I pushed it up and I saved his life. Let's hope that this doesn't happen to me. Okay, my dad's going to be filming and he's going to show you my ATV. My, I mean, my brother's ATV. This is is going to do. Come on, thank you first, man. Thank you. I want to fall, gang. Together, we will make America great again. Woo! Okay, now we're going to look some a lot of cows, some already, and some shit on. And down below, what next video do you want me to do? You're the ugliest cow I've ever seen. Oh, that's gross, man. That's gross, man. Where's the beat? Where's the beat? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Guys, we're here in Okeechobee, Florida. Okay, smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. And this, and, and I hope you enjoy this video and smash that like button. I'll show you what this puppy's gonna do. Okay, we're gonna go in deep mud and I hope you enjoy. Okay, we're gonna discard life and I hope the giant deer doesn't let us down. Let's go, baby! This is on the rocket park. This is on
Okay, people, this is, as you see, where you get milk and all the milks that you get right here. Please eat more beet jerk because we have a lot of farms here. Because please eat more beet jerky, okay? Can I barf already? Okay, people, we're gonna risk our lives. If you see, there's like only a million car cows right there. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh, just, just go back already. Just go back. So many cows. At least get in the back. At least a hundred. Let my the camera guy. You can say you say you can say hi to my dad. That's not cool. Pull me in front of this. watching the video please subscribe no lo asustes tampoco quédate ahí tranquilo no no tranquilo ellos no te van a hacer nada capaz que tengan corona ahora los puercos oh my god
more beet jerky because we have a lot of farms here. Because please eat more beet jerky, okay? Okay, what's up, people? Um, we're in Uncle Cherry Lover. It's amazing. Okay, we're in Uncle Cherry Lover. Here's where you get milk from the cows. Everybody knows that. Okay, so why am I saying this? Okay, so if you see, this is a farm here of cows. And just please drink more milk because I'm satisfied and they're crying right now. No more milk. So please eat more beef jerky too. Well, how about go by there? No, no, no. Just get out of here. Get out of here. There's way too much. but for the most part these should be new tearing the cover off the ball that's something that happens every once in a while you know what we don't see a lot of old timey clips I, I don't know if it's because there weren't as many bloopers or if because nobody laughed at stuff like that i mean guys <laughs> guys in the other <laughs> dugout right they would laugh about it, it you, you'd brush it under the rug you go i hope this clip never sees the light of day like we're not going to show it they also didn't show highlights you know you just watch the game live and then that's that no. There, there was there was no highlight package of of the stuff. So in fact, it's it's hard to even find bloopers in the seventies. Like I think feel like eighties right. was kind of that that era when they had um uh what's the show with Mel Allen? I just totally this week in baseball. This week in right. baseball is where nice it was at. Project. I was it's all boys giving signs from the Astros. <laughs> he may have actually been giving signs. That's we do. We still need to oh, investigate that. Actually, yeah, that was a funny thing at the time. That ball boy might have been involved in some horrible scandal. Now that we think about it, yeah. We, we, yeah. Here, David Ortiz leaves the batter's box for ball four, <laughs> way before the pitch gets home. Here's an older one for you. This is the '86 World Series. Uh, it might have been game. I don't know if it was game one or game two, but uh, we got a little skydiver coming in at Shea Stadium. Gets a nice round of applause. I think nowadays, I, I think that guy would probably get mobbed, don't you? Oh, yeah. In New York, like, people would be actually really pissed Ooh. that he did that. Kale, have you seen this one before? This was one that got famous there for a little yeah. while. AJ Burnett. <laughs> Warming up. You don't usually see a truck out of your periphery when you're pitching, so I could see how he could miss his spot by that much. But... Or Billy the Marlin. It scared, uh, it scared the caviar out of him, if you know <sighs> what I'm saying. If you Ooh. know what I'm saying, though? Uh, I think I am. Okay. I do. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Okay. Another that one, someone could have, that guy could have gotten hurt in this. Yeah. That, that's, that's where we're getting borderline. Like, mm, less fun. I guess it's funny because no one did get hurt, but hoy. He could have gotten turned around on that one. Oh, yeah. There's our buddy, Pat Venditti. Can Venditti. pitch from the right hand side, can pitch from the left, has, uh, uh, a switch glove, yeah. Can can you can put it on both hands? I miss Pat yeah. Creighton University. I'm not not quite sure why they're beating up on this poor mascot here. Though down with mascots, so I'm fine with it. What is Chris Sale flipping? Is I'm not sure what he's got there. Probably gone. He or something. has. Uh, it's a fun little game you play with kids where you pretend you have a little seed or a peanut in your hand. You throw it up in the air and you catch it in a little paper bag. But in this case, he just had a little cup, and he didn't have, he didn't yeah. have any seeds. There's the ball going right through Chris Davis's Ooh. glove. This happened to somebody else just this last year. I'm trying to remember. Went right through the webbing in the glove. That's <laughs> someone running around in the back. Thankfully, AJ Burnett was not on the mound for this game <laughs> because <laughs> that would have that had no laps. Oh man, someone could have been that James Shields. Yeah, James Shields biting the bat. 
Yeah. You totally can't keep a guy like that around. You got to trade him to, to the league with the DH at that point if he's yeah. chewing on lumber. Get him out of there. This we need one. to have this camera a little bit more. The cricket cam. Oh, yeah. I love that. It's a great angle. Paul bounces. It, and we definitely don't see that camera in front of home plate enough. Here we got uh, that probably uh, Dani Echeverria and, and maybe Miguel Rojas wearing different yeah. style Miami Marlins caps. That's a, that's a very high school thing. Yeah. What's going on here? He's arguing with the ump on the way down. That was interesting. Oh, Bartolo. You know, we can make fun of Bartolo Colon for swinging and his helmet coming off, but Nolan Arenado does this all the time. <laughs> very true. Very, he, he, uh, Nolan's got a slightly better physique than Bartolo Colon. <laughs> He's about two decades younger. And Look at yeah. again, I want the exit velo on this foul ball. Holy crap. Hits a sign, hits signage in left foul territory in left field, something that's at least 500 feet away. And as again, it's just a, it's at such an angle where you'd have to pull the ball like crazy. There's no way anyone would hit it out there. Thus, we don't have to worry about this, you know, breaking. And yet, Joey Bats, Jose Batista, David Wright. They, it's something about the bats in, uh, yeah. in the Queens. Again, this one snaps off. At least he made contact before it broke. Yeah, again, that could have been scary as it is, just kind of silly. Twice that's happened to Garrett Cole where he's trying to get the rosin bag and it bursts on him. Right, this is a Pittsburgh thing. This is very clearly some Pittsburgh shenanigans going on. It may have one of the nicest ballparks, but the grounds crew is a little bit questionable right. with the pranks that they're pulling. All right, we need a replay. We need a pause and a KL input on this one here. I need a grading. I need on a 20 to, to 80 scale. Now, this is more of a – this is a soccer and football move. Adam Jones, not happy, spits out his gum, in the air, gets it, the form. I need a grade on that form. I mean, he, he, he nails the gum in air. That's a small target, but the follow-through is beautiful. I'm going to give it like a – it's like a 9 out of 10. I mean – there's not much that could have been better if he yeah. got like a little like if he would have nailed the landing instead of tripping up his feet a little bit. I think it would have been perfect, but solid nine. I mean, to be able to make such good contact out of the air. I mean, no complaints here. That would be a, <laughs> that would be about a seventy five on the old twenty eighty scale. Um, I particularly like the uh, the homage to clearly. I don't know. Is that an homage to Paul O'Neill kicking that ball into the infield, or is yeah. it an homage to the to Mr. Kurt won't. Hennig? Mr. Perfect, who also used to spin the his gum out and hit it 41 minutes, 40 seconds. Right. Which one is that an homage to there, Drew? Both. I think okay. it's both, which makes it the best thing ever, really. Yeah, that you actually could be my favorite blooper right now with, with Adam Jones. You can pay homage to Paul O'Neill and Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig at the same time. I like uh, Julio Tehran's reaction to that absolutely abhorrent call. He just decided to bite the baseball rather than <laughs> scream out the umpire. <laughs> Now, this happens a lot. The foul ball, and we, we talked about it. We didn't get to see it, but the foul ball that gets caught in somebody's beer, whether it lands there or whether you know they're not paying attention, it kind of bounces in, or they actually decide to use the cup as a glove-like receptacle, which is immediately followed by a chugging of said beer. That's I'm going to say, now that, that lady, now we don't know. They, they cut her off there, so I'm not sure, but I think there's one later where, where someone will – so I hope that that I don't want to roast that woman too hard for not chugging the beer because the camera cut away because oh, there's she a chugged rule. It. So this happened to me when I was at Coors once. I didn't one, but for the most part, these should be new. Tearing the cover off the ball—that's something that happens every once in a while. You know what we don't see a lot of old timey clips. I, I don't know if it's because there weren't as many bloopers. Or if because nobody laughed at stuff like that. I mean, guys, guys in the other dugout, <laughs> right? They would laugh about it. it you, you'd brush it under the rug. You go, I hope this clip never sees the light of day. Like we're not going to show it. They also didn't show highlights. You know, you just watch the game live, and then that's that. No, there, there was there was no highlight package of of the stuff. So in fact, it's it's hard to even find bloopers in the seventies. Like I think feel like eighties right. was kind of that that era when they had. Um, uh, what's the show with Mel Allen? I just totally this week in baseball. This week in right. baseball is where nice it was at. Right. I was. It's all boys giving signs from the Astros. He may have actually been giving signs. That's 
we do we still need to oh, investigate that. Actually, yeah, that's a funny <laughs> thing at the time. That ball boy might have been involved in some horrible scandal now that we think about it. Yeah. We, we, Confidence yeah. Of here. David Ortiz leaves the batter's box for ball four <laughs> way before the pitch gets home. Here's an older one for you. This is the 86 World Series. Uh, it might have been game, I don't know if it was game one or game two, but uh, we got a little skydiver coming in at Shea Stadium. Gets a nice round of applause. I think nowadays, I, I think that guy would probably get mobbed, don't you? Oh, yeah. In New York, like people would be actually really pissed Ooh. that he did that. Kale, have you seen this one before? This was one that got famous there for a little yeah. while. AJ Burnett. <laughs> Warming up. You don't usually see a truck out of your periphery when you're pitching, so I could see how he could miss his spot by that much. But... Or Billy the Marlin. It, it, scared, uh, it scared the caviar out of him, if you know <laughs> what I'm saying. If you, you know what I'm saying, though? Uh, I think I am. Okay. I do. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Okay. Another that one, someone could have, that guy could have gotten hurt in this. Yeah. That, that's, that's where we're getting borderline. Like, mm, let's, I guess it's funny because no one did get hurt, but hoy. He could have gotten turned around on that one. Oh, yeah. There's our buddy, Pat Venditti. Can Venditti. pitch from the right hand side, can pitch from the left, has, uh, uh, a switch glove, yeah. Can can you can put it on both hands? I miss Pat. Yeah. Creighton University. I'm not not quite sure why they're beating up on this poor mascot here. Though down with mascots, so I'm fine with it. What is Chris Sale flipping his? I'm not sure what he's got there. Probably gone. He or something. has. Uh, it's a fun little game you play with kids where you pretend you have a little seed or a peanut in your hand. You throw it up in the air and you catch it in a little paper bag. But in this case, he just had a little cup, and he didn't have, he didn't yeah. have any seeds. There's the ball going right through Chris Davis's Ooh. glove. This happened to somebody else just this last year. I'm trying to remember. Went right through the webbing in the glove. That's someone running around in the back. Thankfully, AJ Burnett was not on the mound for this game <laughs> because like a, that would have like a, had no laps. Oh man, someone could have been that James Shields. Yeah, James Shields biting the bat. Yeah, totally you can't normal. keep a guy like that around. You got to trade him to, to the league with the DH at that point if he's yeah. chewing on lumber. Get him out of there. This we one. need to have this camera a little bit more. The cricket cam. Oh, yeah. I love that. It's a great angle. Paul bounces. It, and we it's... definitely don't see that camera in front of home plate enough. Here we got uh, that probably uh, Dani Echeverria and, and maybe Miguel Rojas wearing different yeah. style Miami Marlins caps. That's a, that's a very high school thing. Yeah. What's going on here? He's arguing with the ump on the way down. That was interesting. Oh, Bartolo. You know, we can make fun of Bartolo Colon for swinging and his helmet coming off, but Nolan Arenado does this all the time. <laughs> very true. Very, he, he, uh, Nolan's got a slightly better physique than Bartolo Colon. <laughs> He's about two decades younger. And Look at yeah. again, I want the exit velo on this foul ball. Holy crap. Hits a sign hits signage in left foul territory in left field, something that's at least 500 feet away. And as again, it's just a, it's at such an angle where you'd have to pull the ball like crazy. There's no way anyone would hit it out there. Thus, we don't have to worry about this, you know, breaking. And yet Joey Bats, Jose Batista, David Wright. They, it's something about the bats in uh, yeah. in the Queens. Again, this one snaps off. At least he made contact before it broke. Yeah, again, that could have been scary as it is, just kind of silly. Twice that's happened to Garrett Cole where he's trying to get the rosin bag and it bursts on him. Right, this is a Pittsburgh thing. This is very clearly some Pittsburgh shenanigans going on. It may have one of the nicest ballparks, but the grounds crew is a little bit questionable right. with the pranks that they're pulling. All right, we need a replay. We need a pause and a kale input on this one here. I need a grading. I need on a 20 to, to 80 scale. Now, this is more of a – this is a soccer and football move. Adam Jones, not happy, spits out his gum, in the air, gets it, the form. I need a grade on that form. I mean, he, he, he nails the gum in air. That's a small target, but the follow-through is beautiful. I'm going to give it like a – it's like a 9 out of 10. I mean – there's not much that could have been better if he got like a little like if he would have nailed the landing instead of tripping up his feet a little bit. I think it would have been perfect, but solid nine. I mean, to be able to make such good contact out of the air. I mean, no complaints here. That would be it. <laughs> that would 
that would be about a 75 on the old 2080 scale. Um, I particularly like the uh, the homage to clearly, I don't know, is that an homage to Paul O'Neill kicking that ball into the infield? Or is yeah. it an homage to, the, to Mr. Assume Kurt it Hennig, Mr. Perfect, who also used to spin Did his gum out and hit it 41 minutes, 40 seconds? Right. Which one is that an homage to there, Drew? I think both. I think okay. it's both, which makes it the best thing ever really yeah that you actually could be my favorite blooper right now with, with adam jones you can pay homage to paul o'neill and mr perfect kurt hennig at the same time i like uh julio tehran's reaction to that absolutely abhorrent call he just decided to bite the baseball rather than <laughs> scream out the umpire <laughs> now this happens a lot the foul ball and we we talked about it we didn't get to see it but the foul ball that gets caught in somebody's beer whether it lands there or whether you know they're not paying attention it kind of bounces in or they actually decide to use the cup as a glove like receptacle which is right. immediately followed by a chugging of said beer that's I'm gonna say now that that lady now we don't know they they cut her off there so I'm not sure but I think there's one later where where someone will so I hope that that I don't want to roast that woman too hard for not chugging the beer because the camera cut away because oh, there's she a chugged rule. It. So this happened to me when I was at Coors once. I didn't. And it's all yours, Charlie. <laughs> we didn't get there. We didn't get there. Uh, I didn't, I didn't Is that too much? Action. <laughs> Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast presented by StravaCraft Coffee. Remember to use that promo code dnvr20 because when you do that you get 20 percent off your entire purchase of that cbd infused deliciously rich and potentially life-altering strava craft coffee i am your host drew creaseman i am the managing editor of dnvr rockies with me as always is beat writer patrick lyons and it is wednesday and that means we are having some fun on the DFA show, we're looking at some highlights around the league, and we're doing one of our favorite things to do, Patrick. In fact, it's so favorite, uh, we're going to do it again. We did it not that long ago, double dipping on some bloopers because there was no way we were going to get through all of our favorites when we did this just a couple of weeks ago. As soon as we signed off, we went, oh, but what about that? And then there was that. And then remember that. All of that. So now we get to do that with all of you. Remember that. Hit us up in the comments. Remember to join us live. Monday through Friday on Facebook and Periscope at 4.05. But on Wednesday, the big day, the DFA show, you got to be here with us on YouTube. Leave your comments. Get involved. Let us know what your favorite bloopers are or your least favorite bloopers if they happen to happen to your team because uh, we know there have been a few in the history of the Colorado Rockies. It's it's uh, <laughs> It's been a long and, and storied and interesting history. But one of the things, Patrick, and I talked about this before you came on the show, uh, yesterday or the day before. Who knows? Time is all completely meaningless now. But about the Kendall Hinton situation with the Denver Broncos, right? And the reminder of how difficult it is for even sometimes the best of athletes and those guys who are like that next level down to step into a situation. And they show us all how difficult the sport can be. And, and we're going to get a lot of reminders today about how difficult the sport can be. Yeah, it's like being the best kid in Little League and then going, you know, flashing forward a couple of years and being like, you, you didn't even make your high school squad. Like you just, you flamed out. Maybe you got into some uh, nefarious things you shouldn't have gotten into. And and that's it. What what was potentially a, a great career turned into nothing. And and even with Kendall Hinton still trying to, you know, be a successful wide receiver, it's like the, the gap from being a, a backup quarterback to, to being a starter and rather the, the, the gap from being a, a practice squad QB uh, to being that, that to starting being QB a backup is yeah it's, yeah. it's light years apart. And so, right. you know, and, and even still, and, and even to just be a, a quarterback on the practice squad, think about how many guys would kill to have that spot. And if you had an open tryout for it, you go, 
dude, are, do you really think that you were going to be as good as Kendall Hinton was? You know, like there, like I've gone to, I've, I went to one of these tryouts and uh, on my 21st birthday and it was just fun to be on the field. And I go, yeah. I don't, maybe I'll just wake up on the right side of the bed and I'll just magically be able to chalk it up. We all convince you, right? You go, you know, you you convince yourself. And there are plenty of guys who are like, hey, this guy's a good ball player. But you could very clearly go, yeah, he's he's, he's not what they're looking for. And they were better than me. There are plenty of guys that were better than me. But I still knew they weren't going to make it. And then there were those other guys that go, oh, my God, you you think you might actually have what it takes. And they're like that clueless. Like there's just a – such a big gap. So these these bloopers are a good reminders. You said you called them highlights. Uh, they're they're almost the opposite. Uh, uh, lights. They are very. That would be the opposite, wouldn't it? No, they're, they're that's right. the low lights. But we've got highlights of them because they're just just so enjoyable. Because we're so used to a ground ball to Trevor Story scoops it up, fires over to first. That's the second out of the third inning here. Kyle Freeland moving along here with no runs against the Dodgers. You know, right. How it's supposed to be, but. Once in a while, it kicks up, bounce off the guy's face. The third baseman dives to try to catch it, throws it over the first baseman's head. The runner is going all, all over the place. He misses second base, has to go back and touch it. And you go, wow, that should have just been a 6-3 in the scorebook. And right. yet, here we have this low light slash highlight. So, and Henry asking really the question of the day, how many one in a billion or trillion moments have there been in recent MLB history? Uh, that's one of the things that's crazy about baseball is, right, it gives you so many opportunities that you actually do see those things and that you fall into that routine because there's so many games. And then out of nowhere, something happens. I do want to start us with uh, a Rocky-centric one. There won't be a ton of them today. Uh, Now, don't worry. Don't run away. This isn't going to happen to your Rockies. This is one that I think everyone who's listening to this and watching this here on the lives will remember uh, because it benefited the Rockies so much, but of course, uh, what was Charlie Blackman's gain on what was ruled. And we'll talk a little bit, I think about rulings today, Patrick, that'll be the, (laughs) the kind of, uh, sub, what do they call that in television? The B plot of today's podcast is going to be these, uh, how do you rule this? Uh, because they're errors. We're talking about errors, right? And, And scorekeepers do it. Right. Managers make errors, right? They're they're not as funny bloopers, you know. Grady Little leading, leaving uh, Pedro Martinez out there in the 2003 ALCS and going, you that was a blooper, not a funny one, uh, at least not for Red Sox fans. And you also have got those bloopers of umpires calling a guy safe when he's clearly out, or or vice versa. And again, not as much fun for one fan base. You can't, we can't all laugh at it because we can laugh at Charlie Blackman. And we can we can laugh at these errors, you know, Dexter Fowler losing his mid over center field, uh, but uh, those other types of errors uh, are are much harder to swallow. Yeah, right. There's that's that's, that's a wild. The innocent coming in our bloopers only bloopers as long as no one gets hurt. These are the philosophical questions that we are going to answer on today's podcast. All right, we're going to get at the the heart of it. Luckily, here on this first one. Nobody gets hurt except for probably Hunter Pence's pride as Charlie Blackman laces a line drive to right, and Pence just loses it in the lights or whatever. Look, uh, he was okay. He's hobbling back there. He doesn't look great. But to let Charlie Blackman in his bearded stage, not young Charlie Blackman who could really move, but you're you're talking bearded, full beard Charlie Blackman with the inside the park home run and Johnny Cueto's gone. He had a line drive right at the right fielder. Are you kidding me? Two run home run. That's what I just got charged with. Yeah, the hit probability on that was probably twenty percent, maybe right. even less than that. Because he just he pretty much hit it right where a right fielder would be stationed. It was kind of a line drive. I, I actually think Pence probably, you know, was uh, positioned a little bit better than than where a normal right fielder might be. So that could just d- dunk in for for a single. So even if you look at the the OPS expected for a, a ball hit like that, it's it's still relatively low. And in fact, the, the center fielder probably wasn't even thinking he needed to back that one up. Right. Otherwise, he, he probably would have been there a little bit quicker. Uh, I think that's Denard Span out there, and, so. and just just totally caught him by surprise altogether. Who's that oh, guy? Man. Who the, who who was that? That looked like a Yankee that player. Guy? That I've never I've that never thing. seen that guy before. I've never I've never seen that player before. Uh, 
Mike yeah. Collins, so, uh, and Pence has had a, a few of those at Coors Field as well. I know he's, he's had a little bit of a difficulty with that ballpark. And that's something that sometimes players will, will tell you, you know, there, there are certain ballparks that are easier and, and more difficult to play, but sometimes a certain guy will just be like, man, I can't, can't deal with the vine in, in at Wrigley or that triples alley in San Francisco kills me or like, man, I can play a great left field, but the wall in Boston is just, I can't get the handle for those, you know? So always fun to see those kinds of things. Kale, why don't you pull up whichever one of those other videos you can at this point, and we will just live react to a few of these and we'll have to, to pause them as they go through because these are our highlight videos here. Started with the baseball coming right into the camera. Always nice. Again, we can give the people at home a little bit of feel for the speed of the game. <laughs> that's an ex that's a very expensive uh, error there. I can't imagine. Yeah. I mean, Kale might have a little more experience. He's uh, he's our tech boy. Uh, I think that's Ooh. his official title on the show. Ah, you would probably boy. know Sorry. how expensive that something like that could be, but it, it's Oof. certainly not not cheap. And, and you might not even be able to just replace the the lens on that camera, tech boy. Uh, we're talking <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars just oh. on that lens, probably. Like, oh. I would have brutal. thought two thousand, but yeah, because you have to replace the whole thing, right? You can't just replace. Well, the no, it's not glass. like you can just replace one panel of glass. I mean, right. we're not like. I mean, I'm not talking like ten grand probably for a nice broadcast camera like that. I mean, especially Ooh. one that does the zoom and has the uh, the other thing on it, like the auto focuses on them, have to be crazy, crazy fast because of how fast the depth of field changes so like they're very expensive pieces of equipment there <laughs> yeah what was the exit velo on that we don't get exit velo on foul balls i've talked to manny Renawa about this many times i want exit velo on foul balls that's going to come up again by the way but yeah i think it I think does exist but it's just discarded information because when right. i um oh, it was look on mother's day <laughs> look at, look at this. on mother's day in 2019 i caught a foul ball for that of fran no reyes and it Ooh. knocked me backwards. Uh, I got a nice bruise on my hand, and that was coming in hot. And I, I should have should have pressured Manny to 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 get the exit velo. Get on the that. exit velo. Oh, we got yeah. a Henry Rowan Gardner there at, at Fenway Park. Guy chucks it off the monster. I'd be worried about losing my balance and actually right. going, as they say, ass over tea kettle and falling off of the monster, which yeah might hurt. Might hurt. That's one of the best pitchers in the history of baseball looking worse than most little leaguers have ever looked. Throw what <laughs> it looked like he was maybe trying to throw a knuckleball. Sure. I mean, I know obviously Scherzer doesn't throw a knuckleball, but we, yeah, we had a lot of bloopers with uh, the Rockies having issues with the tarp here, the crew uh, in DC having a very hard time at oh. Nationals Park. Poor guy. No man left behind except Greg. It, I mean, it Greg can like get out of here, man. Greg, you all right? He's like, okay, I got it. What do you guys need? I'm like, we're done. Where you were playing underneath the, the little tent. Gone, come on, man. We got here just I, a little. This looks pretty normal so far. Yeah, so far, just double down the line. Right field is over. Slight misplay. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> he tried to throw the baseball. The baseball just wasn't gonna be thrown. Not having it. What I'm happened? I guess it was here? Darren Ruff. No, his name is way too long. Oh, is that Frenchie? I think that's Jeff Francoeur out there. That's Franco, one of the best arms in the game yeah. at the time. He just, yep, Jeff Francoeur. He, he throws so fast sometimes oh, the no. ball can't even keep up with his arm movement. Maybe he threw it so hard it went all the way around the world and just landed two feet in front of him. I believe it. And it, yeah. Let's, oh, remember very this. cool moment. James Paxton there, starting pitcher. <laughs> Attacked the, by uh, an eagle. Bald eagle. Well, no, it's it. It certainly looked like it. I Not think it's more that really? he goes, hey, you're you're my keeper. You're uh That's a friendly approach, I think. Do we have any James animal Paxton, experts in James Paxton doesn't have any falconry experience, I guess, unfortunately. Oh, oh. wow, that is unfortunate. That now see there, there's gonna be a little bit of a bone bruise. Thankfully, uh it's nothing more than that. Poor yes. uh Eric, Eric Sogard. Sogard getting a, a broken bat. Chris Carter, remember him from a million years oh. ago? Oh wait, it yeah. was only like two. Right. Oh man, they don't usually broken bats don't usually make their way that far out to shortstop like that. That's no. a you don't expect that deep in the look, and it just tripped him. It legit took his feet out from underneath. That That's could rough. have that could have been very. Really? By the way, I do yeah. like those all yellow A's. I love those, those all yellow A's. Sharp. A's. Posey about to get cut down at third. Nope, safe. And oh, where the heck did his helmet go? Unconscious. 
Watch his face right into third. Oh, oh, Buster Posey. What you doing? Oh, no. This was definitely his Napoleon Dynamite moment. Oh. Have you ever seen photographs of Buster Posey and John Hader in the same place at the same time? I think not. No. Those guys have the same head. All right, Kill. Pause this one here, real quick. This, this I hadn't seen before, Patrick. Do you uh, have you seen this one? Being is this more, is this a more... clip from Midsummer? I mean, who's this guy with long, <laughs> flowing blonde hair? Oh, no, Syndergaard. Actually, no, I have not. I've never seen this one. I've never. I, I've never seen this before in all the baseball I've watched in all my life. They're going to show a few more replays on it here, so Kel can let it go. But as they do when they get slower, the bat breaks. Not because of the baseball, before the ball gets there, just out of the might of his mighty arms, swinging the plank of wood. It was not up to the task of being held by the god of thunder, that piece of lumber. It is it just broke in his hands. I've never seen that before. Wow. I, I, yeah, I'm almost speechless. I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a broken uh, hammer of Thor joke there. But this was one that we we did we did talk about last time. We yeah. alluded to, couldn't find the clip, and there it is. Yadi Molina is with the uh, Yadi uh, Molina with the uh, the Velcro stickum on the front of his chest protector, looking all around. Where is it? Where's this ball at? And it's right there, you know, looking like the world's grossest inflamed Audi. <laughs> Ball's high. That's Scott deep. Nixon? Uh, it's Did Johnny like Damon it? going back. Gonna not quite play it. Throwing it in. Okay, oh, this looks normal so far. You know, okay. you, you just remembered what this was, didn't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> Manny Ramirez from about, oh, I don't know, five feet away. So, all right. So, the first part, he jumps up. The Kale, can you pause right here? Whatever. He throws it in. Manny Ramirez, 10 feet away, goes, dude, you've got a real puss arm. So, you know what? Let me cut it off. He dives. So, he doesn't even catch it. Yes, he dives. Oh, falls my down, God. <laughs> throws from his knees to yet another cutoff, man. Bill Miller. And the runner uh, could be Brian Roberts slides in safely, and that was that was uh, one of the early entries of Manny being Manny. His his dreads weren't even all the way long just yet. Oh man, that pause from Super Producer Kale was indeed super because right as the ball was in the air, you were like, okay, so far nothing weird is about about this play, and then the ball got cut off by the left fielder who dove to cut it off and throw it to another guy who cut it off to the yeah. That was, uh, and then we got another ball getting stuck on the catcher in the mask this time, but you know. That uh, really rings your bell. I've never had that happen to me as an umpire or, or as a catcher, but just taking a foul ball off the mask, that is something where it might be about two innings until you feel normal again. And it's always a nice moment because then some of the people in attendance will go, hey, Blue, you all right? Like they know that rocked your, your world a little bit. Um, yeah. The other Have thing is we see 50 Cent just – yeah, I did. I, I took a few tough ones, uh, uh, you know, and I think it shows, right? I think it pretty well shows that <laughs> – but, yeah, no, not – being left-handed. I know, right? Uh, not too many – not too many, but I, I did once or twice. The thing that was interesting about that ball getting stuck in the catcher's mask, too, was they were arguing about whether or not that was strike three because the guy mm -hmm. swung through it and it stuck in the catcher's mask. Here's our old friend, Matt Garza. Remember Matt Garza and his inability to throw the ball to any base ever? Air Before there it. was John Lester, there was Matt Garza. If he was in left field, he would have gone down a runner trying to tag yeah. up at third base. As it were, he was uh, 15 feet away from first base and just oh, sailed God. over the first baseman's head. These pitchers that can have pinpoint accuracy to the plate and hit a spot within a couple of inches and – then they can't throw the ball to first. But, oh, this was just last year or the year before, wasn't it? Remember that? Oh, Polanco falling down and right for the Pirates, and the Cubs get a walk-off win on a blooper to shallow right field. Were there was there only one out? There had to have been only one out because I bet I think so. he was. I bet he Setting was up. like, he, yeah, Zach. He's like, I'm already under it. I'm essentially already underneath this ball. Mm. Let me see where the runner's at. You know, he he might not even be thinking who's on third base. At this point, that, no. it looks like he's got it all the right way. Right here, he knew he was in trouble. Right about there, he knew he was in trouble. <laughs> Looking like a newborn deer. Oh, Just arms and legs akimbo. Went up for the bare hand, tried to do a Kevin Mitchell there. Did not. 
This I guy's an incredible wanted... athlete too. And look at how silly he looks. <laughs> so Drew, let's say you're playing right field for the Pirates. Doesn't matter uh -huh. what you're playing sure. as as you in the present day, right? Yeah. There's all kinds of crazy things. They're letting uh, journalists now play right field. You're playing right field. How long are Here's you laying one. down? Oh, even know fully well that you just lost the game for your team, and and and, and you you know you suck. You know you don't deserve to be on here. Uh, How long I'd are still you still laying there. down on the ground after they just carry me, carry me off the field? You're gonna. We wait. saw this one before too. The hidden ball trick from Helton. Oh yeah, I'd still be out there, man. That's just. That's just the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> you'd wait for the lights to go off, and then you'd start yeah. to hear all the people, you know, sweeping up the leaf blowers, you know, to get all the trash. And you go, "All right, I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna shower now." Right. I mean, they're not gonna right. let you shower, but you know, you're gonna, you're gonna give it a shot. Why not? Hey, you, yeah. they, they put you in a major league game. Oh, the, one of those time lapse things from the movies. Here's Ken Giles punching himself in the face. I've seen a lot of guys slap themselves in the face. I've never seen a full closed fist knuckle punch to your own face. That was a new one for me. That's a real Dwight Schrute move right there, yeah. I'm thinking. Oh, this one's brutal. Oh, no, this is a different one. That we, 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 oh, 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 wow. Wait oh, a minute, wait oh, a minute, wait a minute. Oh, oh, off the you top of the wall. You need to tell me two left fielders for the Detroit for the Tigers, Tigers have done gave this. up assisted. Now, that one wasn't as bad. That was just a real strange one where it, it bounced all around, kicked back onto the field. He went up to try to grab it. Yeah, I definitely want to see that again. The one we saw last uh, uh, last month, he jumped up and, and pushed the ball over the fence. This yeah. one. He, he didn't think the ball was going to come back to him. Yeah, he didn't realize that it had come back to in play. If he just got his glove on that thing, he's at least going to keep him to a double instead of letting it get out. He goes for the bare hand. And tries Oof. to explain it to his coach. He's yeah. just nodding his head and just basically goes, yeah, but, sure. no, but, but then you pushed it over. I know what you're trying to do, <laughs> but then you, you, you pushed it over, though. And that's why he got a home run. And Jonathan VR just getting a face full of Brandon Phillips on this slide right here. Just that's that is not – how That's they better than it. any Javi Baez tag in the world. Phillips takes the throw from left center field, doesn't turn around to make the swipe tag, just puts his sticks his butt out, puts his uh, glove right in front of the bag, runners out. Oh man, Is that Chad Qualls. Yeah, yeah, that's Chad Qualls falling down on the fist pump celebration, striking a guy out, then falling down. Do the Rockies still give him a two year deal if they if they see this clip? You know, right, I mean, right. yeah, it's a blooper. It's it's a rare thing that happens, but is it enough to go? This guy's an embarrassment. We no, 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 no. We can't, can't give him a two year that. deal. Uh, a Rod doing his best J Lo impression, I guess. Here, slide. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah, the Diamondbacks. We haven't seen these in a while. We haven't. Thing, yeah. Cubs did that. Didn't the Cubs do? Uh, yeah, like Cubs did one of those. Kind of celebrations, yeah. bullpen dances. Maybe if the Angels are good next year, we'll see it again with, uh, you know, Joe Madden inspired. You know, dancing is always nice. Robert <laughs> Bull, is yeah. Always. Bartolo and Colon hey, is always nice. Yeah. Hey, oh. Bart, um, let's quit untucking your shirt. You got a belly. Hey, Albert, give it a year or two. Give it a year or two. We'll see what happens. We got a, a full red bodysuit, so not a streaker, just a runner. Getting so not a green man. Him. Not a green man. We got a red man on the field, and right. one of the security guards says, I'm never going to get my hands on you, so I'm just going to stick my foot out. Trips the guy. Smooth move. There's our fave, Dexter Fowler. Ooh. You got to love Dex. There we go. Over to <laughs> Big Poppy comes up about three feet short of second base on the slide. <laughs> Just I'm good here. I'm fine. <laughs> Ooh, the hot foot. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does he we not know his those. foot is on fire? How do you not know your foot is on fire, coach? I haven't seen one of those in a while. That's like, I mean, it's it's all hazing in a sense, right? Anytime you rib somebody, it's it's kind of like a haze, but that's a little too far where you, you know, someone really could get hurt. I also don't know what they use. I, if, if it's pine tar, if it's like <clears throat> stick them, I, I'm not, I'm not sure what they use to, uh, to ignite it. <laughs> yeah. <There's, laughs> I, 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 that was the first time I ever saw a baseball player go to the sidelines and, and steal some food from somebody. Uh, remember that this became a meme, the, the green man outrunning the, the fan who thought Mr. he Freeze? had it. It's yeah. the freeze. 
Um, oh, that hurt. Some of these guys should really not slide into third base. Again, these are these are great athletes who've made it to the highest level of baseball, and some of them are showing you that sliding into third base can be a bit of an issue. And a nice so, little back rub from Poppy to Albert. So, Drew, I'll, I'll put this to you. You're you're a you're a lanky guy with long levers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kale, Kale, you're you're a relatively fit guy for your age. Uh, I'm curious, how long would you need to train to beat the freeze? And for anyone who doesn't know, they do this in Atlanta, really creative, somebody who works for the team. So, you know, he's probably working in ticket sales. And then, you know, around the, the third or fourth inning, they say, all right, go put your costume on, limber up, do some stretches, plyometric, all that jazz. He goes to left field. Someone starts in about left center. They say go. So not only – actually, I think they start at the same time. But he just the, – the, the regular civilian – starts from left center so he doesn't have to run quite as far and the freeze almost never loses and that's what we saw the guy showboating almost doing a little neon dion going to the finish line he trips up the freeze beats him kale drew how long how much training would you need in order to feel like like you could beat the freeze in, in a fair race oh you're on mute we cannot, we cannot hear you, and I'm sure you're making great Kale's points. Kale's giving an impassioned answer here. I know. It, I bet it was good. I bet it was good. Just, yeah. What do you think, Drew? How long would it would it take? So it would take me. It would take me a couple of months, but I think I could do it. There was a time because oh. I ran track in high school, and uh, speed was kind of my thing in sports. That was that was kind of my go to skill set. I ran at my best about a four five forty. Um, I could run a hundred yard dash in 11 seconds flat. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was on the four by four team, all that kind of stuff. So I was a sprinter, not a long distance guy. Uh, the question is, so how long do you know? Cause I'm going to run at like the 200. I ran the 200 in track in high school and that's about as long as I can sprint. If I've got to sprint 300 yards, I never did the 400, which is once all the way around the track, I would die. So if it like that's the part where I would be concerned because I had I it would be two hundred. I was gonna say it was half. I, I had my number yeah. slightly off. I, I actually would think it would be about two hundred. I I would have to train for a while. Is my mic working now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sweet. I'd have to train for a while. It'd be I'd have to get my cardio up, but even then I don't know if I could do it because I wasn't a sprinter. I was like a long distance runner. Mm. It's like the shortest distance I ever did was the four hundred, which I did break the one minute mark in which was cool, yeah. but like, I don't think that that's fast enough to beat him. Was it on a bike though? No. If so, I, okay. All right. Skate <laughs> blades. What do we a foot all foot? So drew you've convinced me. I'm going to go ahead and co-sign. Um, you said, a, you, I'm not sure if she said a few or a couple, I'm going to give you three and a half months to train and you got this kale. Okay. <laughs> we're going to set you up with the trainer. All right. We're going to get you on a whole diet regimen. We're going to check in. Uh, we're going to do a whole DNVR documentary style series to, to see your transformation. And it, it is going to be more of a year long thing. We're, we're, we're probably going to get about three or four seasons of content out of this training. Uh, we may, we may need to get into more, you know, some of your, your personal life. Cause it's not just about the physical. Now there's an emotional thing that you're going through. Um, but I'm going to give you a year and say you're going to be able to do it as well. And if I'm training for a year, I might as well train for like an Ironman or something. <laughs> he's, he's like, maybe right, now, hold on a second. racing the freeze. He's like, that's hold what I'm on a second. Dedicate a year of my life to racing some Jagov in a green suit in Atlanta. An, an Iron sure Man is an <laughs> Iron Man is like running a hundred miler. Like it's it's no oh. an Iron Man is. Like a marathon, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a year. You could definitely do a marathon with some good training. But Iron Man, come on, that's that's a couple extra disciplines. I, but I used to be a competitive biker and swimmer. I feel like I could pick Ooh. it up. All right, See, you, can, found you can okay. do. How about I'll give you? I'll give you uh, uh, an Olympic length triathlon, which is half. It's a half Iron Man. I'll give you that. A year. I, I think a year. in a year I could do that. I'm not could, saying I'd be fast. I think I could finish okay. one. Dude, people, I again, I've, I've run marathons. I've, I've done 50-mile races. I've, I've run 67 miles in 24 hours. Like, that was 
That, that sounds funsies. horrible. Why would you do uh, yeah. that to yourself? Yeah, for fun. Right? For fun. Yeah. And I slept for three hours in the middle because I had just worked the day before. That's for funsies. <laughs> but guess what? When someone tells me they ran a 5K, I'm like, dude, that's what it's about. Like, that's that's you. That's your marathon right there. Right. So yeah, I'm like, it props. You know what I mean? So it, it really doesn't matter the distance. It's It's what's good for you. There's no... I'm better. You're better. Your time just to finish it is like, it's like it's amazing. It's amazing. So just funny responding to Will's comment real quick. Um, that's <laughs> just funny that you mentioned pentathlon. My brother's wife used to be on the World Cup for pentathlon. So that's kind All of right, funny. So, so you guys are the, making stuff up now. The Iron no, Man. I'm not. That's the, literally true. The, the <laughs> Iron Man is a triathlon. Try. So yes. you're, you're, you start with a swim, you do the bike, then you do the run, which is the hardest. What would the, what would the other two disciplines be if, if somehow the triathlon, they said, you know what? It's been too easy. Too many people are doing tries. We need to make them pentas. What, what else well, would it be? So you pentathlon is. I know what is, a real pentathlon is. Do you actually? Can you name all five disciplines? Chess. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Hold on, hold on. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Uh, bowling. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, javelin. No, that's actually decathlon. I think it's it's just it's weird. So I'd be surprised if you would know it. It is. It's, it's shot put. swimming, running, shooting, horseback riding, and fencing. Okay, I did not know about this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> in the Olympics because they don't do that in they don't have. So the decathlon's an Olympic sport. In the Winter Olympics. No, it's the Summer Olympics. Really? Yeah. And now the decathlon, I know, like that's that's where yeah. all the best athletes. Completely different thing. That's Bruce Jenner. Oh, yeah, I, this I is more considered aware. like, uh, like because the finals, quote unquote, it's more of like the equ- it's more of an equestrian event because the finals is the horseback riding. Okay. But it's a weird it's what? it's a weird sport. So I but horseback my riding. My was on the World Cup for it. <laughs> horseback riding and shooting are the final two two legs of that. No, it's, uh, it's this is very confusing. Uh, your swim is separate, and then your running and your shooting are together, and then you have a separate round for fencing, and all of those you get points for. Fencing. And if you have enough points, you make the cut, and if you make the cut, the final is then a horseback horse jumping event. All right. Well, our new DNVR <laughs> pentathlon. We're gonna brand this. We're gonna see if we can get it done. It's gonna be traditional. We're gonna do the swim, bike, run. The fourth discipline is going to be Lego. Now, not Legos. I've been told by people it's not it's not Legos. It's Lego. So you're gonna have to go ahead and assemble. You know, I'm thinking the Millennium Falcon, and it's gonna be hard because you're gonna it's be jittering, nice. right? You're taking some of those gel shots and whatever it is. That's gonna be the fourth one. You gotta assemble it. It's gotta be right. We're gonna get an angry DM from someone who's like really into pentathlon in like oh, yeah. a week. Just like digging Patrick. Patrick, like you're making fun of a really competitive sport. And... <laughs> and, and the fifth one is gonna be baking. So you've got to make. I've been watching a lot mm. of the great, great British. Damn, I was gonna win this thing right up to that part. You threw a curveball at me there at Dude, the end. But if yeah. since you're pretty good at, at the first four. Like all you got to really do is is work hard on that baking thing, you know, yeah. and, it, and it's Baker's choice too, right? So you can kind of um, go you go crazy and depending on the judges. Directions. I've got those those cake mix direction. I mean, it, no one hates chocolate cake, right? It won't be you know whatever. I'll be all right. right. I'll be okay. You're gonna need to do a lot of chocolate work. Uh, you got to do a little little sponge sugar. So, but awesome. I, I think you got this. I think all you right. got this. All right. Kale, all how right. Do we want to watch more well, bloopers? All right. No, more, well, I got to get us back on track here. How much more time do you need to train for the, the Lego and the uh, baking disciplines? <sighs> Another two, two months years. at least. I haven't oh, picked two, up a Lego okay. set in 10 years. Confidence. All right. So, Drew, you only need about five months and you're, yeah, you're ready I'm, to take over the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Love it. Love all it. right. Before we get to our second set of bloopers here, uh, we do have to, and and I wait. You know, if this was the DNVR bets program, they would have already been laying bets on what type of bloopers we're going to see here in this second and final grouping here. Uh, you know, how many of them are going to be actual errors? How many of them are going to be not counted as errors? How many of them are going to not even actually include on-field plays and all that stuff? So, if you've got the same kind of problem or solution that they do to making sports a whole lot more fun. Well, then you've got to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and start getting skin in the game. Now, I don't believe you can yet 
lay your bets on the pentathlon, but you can take your bets in college football, which is pretty fantastic because this weekend Gonzaga and Baylor will be going toe to toe for what could be the nation's top ranking and draft book draft book no that's not right draft kings sports book america yeah, i've said it enough times you would think i would know america it, it should be a verb yeah. we should be draft make book. sure you draft sports booking kings. out there folks yeah <laughs> make sure you're sports booking and draft kinging all of those things together in in all of the order though when you're searching for the app of course you want to go ahead and get it right um, but they have got all the college basketball fans who sign up now the chance to win a hundred dollars when betting on either gonzaga or Baylor to win this clash of Titans. Plus, you'll get a deposit bonus of up to $1,000 when signing up using promo code DNVR. Must be 21 or older, Colorado only. Bonus comprised of a first deposit bonus. Deposit bonus requires 25 by playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. And my DraftKings Sportsbook pick of the week it's coming tomorrow. Still doing my scouting, and and for for all our like hardcore listeners, on pick of the week right there. I would we would have right. shut the whole show down and sent everybody home. It would have been a Vince Carter moment in the, in the dunk contest. Who's going to win this fictitious sport? Right. Well, I, I know people are are clamoring. I've had people reach out to me because my hot streak is still going on. Chelsea right. and Tottenham did play to a draw last week, so I'm still going hot. I'm still scouting. I really want to make sure I. I put some money in your guys' hands, so uh, look for that pick tomorrow. I like that. I like that. Set I don't want to make up. a blooper. I don't want to make a blooper here. I I'm, I got I got a streak going here. It's, yeah, it's, it's almost Joe DiMaggio esque. Yeah. Right. It basically, is but better than I would say. Uh, so, all right, Kale. Whenever you are ready, hit us up with that second group of bloopers. Got stuff flying around in my room here. I'm trying. Got everything going on. I'm swinging. If anyone's wondering why I'm swinging my arms wildly. Got stuff. So I think there are going to be a couple of repeats in this one, but for the most part, these should be new. Tearing the cover off the ball, that's something that happens every once in a while. You know what we don't see? A lot of old-timey clips. I, I don't know if it's because there weren't as many bloopers or if because nobody laughed at stuff like that. I mean, guys <laughs> guys in the other dugout, <laughs> right, they would laugh about it. it you, you'd brush it under the rug. you go, I hope this clip never sees the light of day. Like, we're not going to show it. They also didn't show highlights. You know, you just watch the game live, and then that's that. Yeah. There, there was, was no highlight package of, of the stuff. So, in fact, it's, it's hard to even find bloopers in the 70s. Like, I think feel like 80s right. was kind of that, that era when they had um, – uh, what's the show with Mel Allen? I just totally this week in baseball. This week in right. baseball is where nice it was at. I it's all boys giving signs from the Astros. He may have actually been giving signs. That's we do. We still need to okay. investigate that. <laughs> actually, yeah, that was a funny thing at the time. That ball boy might have been involved in some horrible scandal. Now that we think about it, yeah. We, we, Confidence yeah. Here. David Ortiz leaves the batter's box for ball four <laughs> way before the pitch gets home. Here's an older one for you. This is the 86 World Series. Uh, it might have been game, I don't know if it was game one or game two, but uh, we got a little skydiver coming in at Shea Stadium. Gets a nice round of applause. I think nowadays, I, I think that guy would probably get mobbed, don't you? Oh, yeah. In New York, like, people would be actually really pissed Ooh. that he did that. Kale, have you seen this one before? This was one that got famous there for a little yeah. while. AJ Burnett. <laughs> Warming up. You don't usually see a truck out of your periphery when you're pitching, so I could see how he could miss his spot by that much. But. Or Billy the Marlin. It scared uh, It scared the caviar out of him, if you know what I'm saying. If you, you know what I'm saying, though? Uh, I think I am. Okay. I do. Yeah. Okay, right. Oh, man. Okay, Another that one someone could have – that guy could have gotten hurt in this. Yeah, that, that's, that's where we're getting borderline. Like, mm, less fun. I guess it's funny because no one did get hurt, but hoy. He could, could have gotten have turned around on that one. Oh, yeah, there's our buddy, Pat Venditti. Can Venditti. pitch from the right-hand side, can pitch from the left, has uh, uh, a tidious. switch glove. Yeah, can can you can put it on both hands. I miss Pat. Yeah. Creighton University. I'm not, not quite sure why they're beating up on this poor mascot here. Though down with mascots, so I'm fine with it. What is Chris Sale flipping his... I'm not sure we just got there. Probably gone. He or has 
uh, it's a fun little game you play with kids where you pretend you have a little seed or a peanut in your hand. You throw it up in the air and you catch it in a little paper bag. But in this case, he just had a little cup and he didn't have he didn't yeah. have any seeds. There's the ball going right through Chris Davis's Ooh. glove. This happened to somebody else just this last year. I'm trying to remember. Went right through the webbing in the glove. That's <laughs> someone running around in the back. Thankfully, AJ Burnett was not on the mound for this game <laughs> because <laughs> that would have okay. had no laps. Oh man, someone could have been that James Shields. Yeah, James Shields biting the bat. Yeah, totally you can't normal. keep a guy like that around. You got to trade him to, to the league with the DH at that point if he's yeah. chewing on lumber. Get him out of there. This we one. need to have this camera a little bit more. The cricket cam. Oh yeah, I love that. It's a great angle. Ball bounces. It, and we it's... definitely don't see that camera in front of home plate enough. Here we got uh, that's probably uh, Dani Echeverria and, and maybe Miguel Rojas wearing different yeah. style Miami Marlins caps. That's a, that's a very high school thing. Yeah. What's going on here? He's arguing with the ump on the way down. That was interesting. Oh, Bartolo. You know, we can make fun of Bartolo Colon for swinging and his helmet coming off, but Nolan Arenado does this all the time. <laughs> Very true. Very, he, he, uh, Nolan's got a slightly better physique than Bartolo Colon. He's about <laughs> two decades younger. And Look at yeah. again, I want the exit velo on this foul ball. Holy crap. Hits a sign, hits signage in left foul territory in left field, something that's at least 500 feet away. And as again, it's just a, it's at such an angle where you'd have to pull the ball like crazy. There's no way anyone would hit it out there. Thus, we don't have to worry about this, you know, breaking. And yet, Joey Bats, Jose Batista, David Wright. They, it's something about the bats in uh, yeah. in the Queens. Again, this one snaps off. At least he made contact before it broke. Yeah. Again, that could have been scary as it is. Just kind of silly. Twice that's happened to Garrett Cole, where he's trying to get the rosin bag and it bursts on him. Right, this is a Pittsburgh thing. This is very clearly some Pittsburgh shenanigans. Going on. It may have one of the nicest ballparks, but the grounds crew is a little bit questionable right. with the pranks that they're pulling. All right, we need, a replay. we need a pause and a kale input on this one here. I need a grading. I need on a 20 to, to 80 scale. Now, this is more of a – this is a soccer and football move. Adam Jones, not happy, spits out his gum, in the air, gets it, the form. I need a grade on that form. I mean, he, he, he nails the gum in air. That's a small target, but the follow-through is beautiful. I'm going to give it like a, it's like a nine out of 10. I mean, there's not much that could have been better. If he got like a little, like if he would have nailed the landing instead of tripping up his feet a little bit, I think it would have been perfect, but solid nine. I mean, to be able to make such good contact out of the air. I mean, no complaints here. That would be, <laughs> that would be about a 75 on the old 2080 scale. Um, I particularly like the, uh, the homage to clearly, I don't know. Is that an homage to Paul O'Neill kicking that ball into the infield? Or is yeah. it an homage to, the, to Mr. Kurt world. Hennig, Mr. Perfect, who also used to spin the his gum out and hit it 41 minutes, 40 seconds? Right. Which one is that an homage to there, Drew? Both. I think okay. it's both, which makes it the best thing ever, really. Yeah, that you actually could be my favorite blooper right now with Adam Jones. You can pay homage to Paul O'Neill and Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig at the same time. I like uh, Julio Tehran's reaction to that absolutely abhorrent call. He just decided to bite the baseball rather than scream out the umpire. <laughs> now, this happens a lot. The foul ball, and we, we talked about it. We didn't get to see it, but the foul ball that gets caught in somebody's beer, whether it lands there or whether you know they're not paying attention, it kind of bounces in, or they actually decide to use the cup as a glove-like receptacle which is immediately followed by a chugging of said beer. That's I'm going to say, now that, that lady, now we don't know. They, they cut her off there, so I'm not sure. But I think there's one later where where someone will. So I hope that that, I don't want to roast that woman too hard for not chugging the beer because the camera cut away because oh, there's she a rule. It. So this happened to me when I was at Coors once. I didn't 